In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about how SPSS works and how things are laid out. And then once we understand that, we'll go ahead and do the process that takes us to the mean, standard deviation, all those measures of standard um, central tendency and variability. So this is the first thing that you see when you open up SPSS. I went ahead and opened it up as the program, and then I just double clicked this part here that says open another file. And that gave us my option to pick out which file that I want. If you just open up any of these files, of course, SPSS will boot up and open that data set automatically. For now, we're gonna go ahead and work with the new drug data set, which will be available to you as you go ahead and, and do this tutorial. So let's open that one up, open it, and it's, there it is. Okay, so here's the whole data set. This is a pretty simple one. There's only a few variables, but you can see the tab that we're in, in the lower left corner, is called Data View. And in this tab, what you can actually see are all of the data themselves, the numbers, the codes, the text that goes into here. So this is the raw data. So it's organized. If you're familiar with Excel, it looks a lot like that, like a spreadsheet there, where you've got labels up top and then information below. If we just wanted to know a little bit more about what variables were in the data set, we would go down here to the other tab called Variable View. If you click here, down in the lower left corner, it opens up just a list of the variables in your study. So here we have the subject, the treatment, the gender, age, before and after measures of blood pressure. If you want to make that a little bigger, you can go ahead and just expand by grabbing this little connector. But alongside that, you can see a bunch of other information about what variables are in this data set. So here, under type, you can see string is what SPSS calls anything with text in it. So any essays or written out pieces of information are string variables, but the rest that we're going to be doing statistics on are the numeric variables. Here is where you can encode the different values associated with your variable. So let's say for gender, we had some distinct categories that we used to assess gender and they're coded for, you know, one equals male, two equals female, etc. In fact, if you go ahead and click this right part of the values cell, a secret little thing will pop up and allow you to open this. So you can see here, this is the value labels. In this case, we just have one equaling male, two equaling female. So we have two categories that we're using for this variable. Okay, same thing here. If we look at the treatment, we have either the control group or the new drug group. This is a study where they gave people a sort of experimental drug to see if it would reduce their blood pressure. So here you can see that the control group is coded as zero and the new drug group is coded as one. Okay, same thing goes. These ones don't have categories, so we don't label them. And finally, the last thing that's important to consider is this measure type. So this is where you see the difference between nominal variables and scale variables. We already know that nominal variables are those with categories like treatment, where it's either one category or the other, whereas scale is something like equal interval or ratio level variables, anything that's along some continuous scale. If you go ahead and click the right button, you see that there's the option to have ordinal data, but for now, let's just ignore that that's a possibility. Let's just deal with nominal and scale variables. Okay, so you can see this is how the variables are laid out. Let's go ahead and go back to our data view, and we can see all the numbers that are there. We can scroll down and we can see that there are 50 people in this study. One thing you might wanna do though, is you notice that even though we had labels for treatment and gender, they're showing up still as ones and zeros and ones and twos, right? So what are we gonna do? How do we deal with that? Well, if this button here that converts A to one, this is what you do if you wanna switch and uh, toggle between having the labels on there or just using the numbers. So if I click on it, you can see it replaces the ones and zeros and ones and twos with the actual category names. We can turn that off if we want, but it's just there in case you want it. Okay, and that's about it. Uh, one thing that might be helpful is sometimes you want to organize these and make snap judgments about what's going on in your data. So let's say I wanted to organize these from youngest to oldest. How would I do that? Well, if you want to just click on the variable and right click, I should say, you have the option to sort ascending or sort descending. And either one of those will help you to 
put those variable uh put each of those uh, scores in order from biggest to smallest or smallest to biggest so let's go smallest to biggest all right so now you can see it just reordered everything now that we're going from 45 all the way to the oldest age in this study which is 75 right and you can see everything else got jumbled up so it used to be sorted by this now it's being sorted by age i could do the same thing if i wanted to sort by the before uh, blood pressure from the highest to the lowest and it does the same thing okay so if you're ever interested in sorting people that would be how you do it okay so for now i think that's about all you need to know as far as getting familiar with spss in the next video we're going to use this same data set and do descriptive statistics on it